Right. All of these lures here is now for repairs for this season. Um, I'm going to run through a couple of them and the history of them and so forth. So, so um, we're going to start off with how the spread works. So, this would be your boat. The two ways of putting it this way here. Uh, I don't like this way. It's un unevenly spread. Different distances and these ones are in pairs. I find that this way, that would be your Hong Kong. This will be your outriggers. Three on the outriggers and then these ones on your gunnel. And uh, I find that you can do a sharper turn with these ones if you set it right. Now, what I mean by right is... If you've got your lines going, your first line going in, and that's where your line touches touches the the, uh, the water, then that's where your lure would be. The distance from your lure to your next line coming down touches the water. That should be anything from 5 to 10 meters. I, I like to have it about 8 meters or so forth. Then if you make a turn, it will actually turn underneath each other and don't tangle up. So you'll set your Hong Kong out first, and then you'll go this one, then that one, same as that one. You'll go put them in pairs out, right? Then your lure said your lure choice. On your lure choice, you've got different heads, and it seems like people don't know what the heads are like. Like this is a, a flat head with a center. Anyone that's a flat head with a center would go in this area here where your motor makes turbulence. So the turbulence of the water will do the movement for the lures. Then you would get your ones that are off center like this one. These ones that's off center, the lure is manufactured to do its own movement by the placement of the line or the shape of the lure. That one and you will look at these ones here. These type of lures will go on the outside in this area here where there's no turbulence. That's a very important thing when you when you um, decide which lure to pull and which lures to buy. So you won't buy all the same and what's them. The colors and so forth, when you start off, you start off with, with a spread with different colors in it and you determine which um, color works uh, if I find black and purple works then I put a whole sp spread out of black and purple with different type of heads and so forth now um, also you'll find if you look at this lure here which is more or less the same size you can hear there this one is a weighted lure and this is not a weighted lure. That means the insert, the insert is on this one is lead, and the insert of this one is actually um, uh, resin. Now the difference between these ones, this one you can pull faster, and in a windy condition you will pull this one. Uh, it won't actually go sideways and tangle up with all of your lures. So um, I prefer buying one with with a uh, with a lead insert that's heavier that means i can pull my lure faster so when you are pulling these lures the speed normal speed is about 8 not 16 k's an hour when you're going for dorado and mall and so forth you can go faster you can go slower but the action of the lure is important the lure is actually designed as you look at the lure yeah it pops out of the water can we get further up, sir? Okay. You, it pops out of the water and grabs the bubble. Grabs a bubble and a bubble will form around this lure. That way around it. Which would be the shape of the fish. And this will actually be the side fin. The color of the lure would be the side fin. If it, <clears throat> if it stops, it will wag about for five seconds. Then she's got to pop out again. Then you know your speed is right for the lure that you're pulling. 
if you find that it's not doing that, then you either got to replace the lure closer, or you have to do um, further away from the boat. You've got to play with it until you find where, it, where it's in a sweet position. Now, um, we've got one very interesting uh, one here. That this is the first on the vertical jigging, the squids that they use. This was the first, first, first prototype that was made before we designed it. Those times we actually made Lewis on Gladiator Lewis together with my brother-in-law and so forth. And um, I was about 24 and we were watching a guy fishing at Animal Shoal and the guy who were whacking the kuta. But he was very clever. He was very clever by taking off all of his, his rigs when he comes back. And um, on, this, on this lure, he actually would... We were watching him launch. And then while we were dying in Alawal Shoal, just keeping an eye on the guy and so forth. And then when he comes back, you can see the waterline as much... You know, he's loaded with fish. And the one day he came into the shop to buy some stuff and I said to, to the chap there, let me handle this guy, let me find out exactly what's the situation there. And what he, what he did is he actually put Yeah. 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 He would actually troll very fast, basically close to a planing speed um, to determine where the fish is and he would pull these bulb squids he'll have his live bait and he'll have a couple of sticks ready to live bait as soon as he finds the shoal of kuta or whatever he's fishing and he would use these ball sinkers there are about four of them that you'll place in the inside yeah and he would pull this at a, at a hell of a speed different colors but um, his favorite color was a red head with a white same as they use in the cape of tuna and he would be close to on a plane, so he'd cover a lot of distance. And when these sticks go, then he would back up and lie bait. And uh, it actually, we made it. And then uh, what happened when they went to the, the jet ski guys, went to Kinjata. They were fishing and they found, if they put, put it this way around, and a hook at the bottom and a hook at the top, and they vertical jig it, it actually works very well for, for kingfish. And that's where the lure came, where they made this out of out of lead, and they had the skirt, and you could tie your hook at the bottom and at the top. So this is the history of the vertical jig um, that was uh, uh, designed years back. I mean, that was what's in, but this still is a, is an excellent, excellent uh, what's in to pull very, very, very fast. But now. You get the speed pros and so forth, which is which is excellent. It works well. Um, yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to retie all of the um, recrimp the leaders and um, putting new hooks up, replacing the hooks of these ones, and then sort out. Our tackle for the year uh, so we've basically covered basically your your lures how to pull them where to pull them and which heads and then when it comes to the colors you know that's where the lure manufacturer catches everybody uh, <laughs> I'm one of those guys that you get caught but I mean um, purple and black is always a winner blue and white's a winner and then on your this color for your for your tunas and your rainbow color. This one here for your tunas, and depending what you what you go for. But I wouldn't just pull any lure anywhere. The heads makes a big difference. In um, in they were manufactured to be pulled in a certain uh, position behind the boat. Flathead center. Flathead center. In your turbulence water, anything where the lure is made to do an action, like off-center, 
the off center would be on your sides slanted heads would be on your sides and so forth so I uh, hope that help you guys in, the, in choosing your, your Lewis.